So about the Pope, um, somebody has been teaching him to tweet. Somebody has been teaching him to use iPad. I'm sure that the Catholic priests, uh, all the other people who are involved in this wonderful church will be taking heed, doing what the Pope says. I mean, that's what you do. So, but I mean, it's uh, instead of teaching them how to tweet, I mean, I suppose you sh would have been more profitable to teach him how to distinguish right from wrong. <laughs> I mean, the motive why they want to start tweeting is because, I mean, they have sort of lost their touch to teenagers. <laughs> I mean, haven't they done enough harm already? <laughs> but I mean, I can also see the benefits in, like, uh, use an iPad uh, for tweeting. I mean, it can be used as a method of prayer and worship, I mean, okay, uh, we know that God can hear everything we say to him, I mean, they teach that to you in Sunday school. But, I mean, what happens to you, I mean, when you maybe lose your ability to talk? I mean, maybe you will get a brain tumor, you lose your ability to talk, just, uh, maybe somebody will cut your tongue out. Who knows what in the world? I mean, serious, we live in fucked up toys. <laughs> So, I mean, at least the Pope has got the option to write his tweets to God, write uh, maybe memos to God, send them to his iPad, send them to cyberspace, I believe God can see also the cyberspace. <laughs> and I mean, he has to be able to read, I mean, come on. Um, he's, they say that he's almighty, okay, so I'm sure that he had to proofread what the people have been typing on the Bible. I mean, can you imagine uh, writing the Bible with the equipment that they had those days? You had the stone tablets, you had the um, um, hammer, then you had the um, sort of screwdriver-like thing, of which I don't remember what it's called in English now. <laughs> the carving tool of some sort, anyways. And I mean, they never carved. I mean, what if they hit their like um, tongue when they were uh, banging away the verses over there? I believe that the carving tool sort of slips. And you might get some spelling errors in the text. So I believe there was one or two occasions when God just had to point his finger uh, just to correct the stuff that was written on the tablets. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, now I could probably take a sip of that. It, it's okay. Uh, now this is water, right? <laughs> what is this? Oh, don't you know Anna? <laughs> yeah, that's why I had to make sure. <laughs> yes, she not only like I suspected. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I believe you guys are also probably familiar with this uh, movement called uh, Slut Walk. No! Yes! Right. Yes? No? no. Okay, um... It's uh, arriving in Finland sort of soonish in August, sort of. Uh, it started originally in Toronto, Canada, of uh, all places. And uh, the idea behind it is that, I mean, there was this some uh, authority, some policeman, maybe, who was telling this some uh, high school students or college students or something that uh, they should uh, dress appropriately, you know, cover themselves enough so that they wouldn't be raped. <laughs> And I mean, these women figured out that I mean, uh, we want to protest against this kind of thing. We want to have our liberty to dress however we want. And I mean, without being afraid that somebody will um, do sexual violence to us. Okay. So what they do is like, uh, they wear really slutty clothes, right? Maybe sluts on their belly, maybe on their chest, maybe on boobs, whatever you can think of. And then you walk around the city. It's like a protest, but I mean, the people are half naked. Basically. And I happened to go to this uh, website in Cork, I mean, because I was thinking, like, I mean, okay, Cork is a town where there has been a lot of political movement recently. I mean, there was the Spanish Revolution going on, there was a grand parade. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> no, no, seriously, the, the Spanish Revolution is not a joke, I mean, it actually happened. <laughs> But anyway, I got, uh, got this one um, feminist uh, unions, I guess, website, and uh, they said that uh, the only reason that they don't have the slut walk here in court is that uh, it's because of the lack of resources. <laughs> uh, 
Oxford is first not wall in Cork. That sounds like a real contradiction in terms because I mean, if you go out uh, during the week uh, five times on five nights, I mean, you can see a real slut parade going on over there. <laughs> so how the fuck can you not have a slut wall? <laughs> Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's my time to rest my case, so to say. No, 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 so the next thing would have been about uh, winkers in Cork and the wankers in Finland, yeah, but... Uh, we want to hear wankers! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, no, I think I will leave that to some other future occasion. I mean, always keep the suspense, I mean, coming <laughs> on, so... If you want to see me again sometime, uh, I think you have to be buttering up Con and Ashley a little bit. You know the trailer now, I gave you some pointers in the beginning, so hope you get those. We love you, Ashley! Yeah, 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 yeah. guy, I've never heard a more charming description of rape. <laughs> Someone might do sexual violence on you. <laughs> it sounded like the title of a Marvin Gaye song. I was like, that sounds alright. <laughs> do some sexual violence on me. <laughs> Why not? Give it up again. Ah, that was cool. Are you ready for your headliner? Make some noise! Oh, yeah. 